Hello everyone, my name is Vaibhav Raghavendra Devarpanda and today we are going to give a demonstration on Python for Kids. I am from Vaibhav Robotics. In this course, we will see how to learn, think and design your own games. So, let us just quickly go into what you guys will learn in the whole course. So in the course content, we have that in session 1, I'm going to teach you why we need to use Python and how we should you install Python in Windows. And also, I'm going to teach you some basics of Python coding. And then in session 2, I will show you what are Python operators, we will have some fun with variables and I'll also teach you what are strings. In the third session, let's see what are lists and tuples and then going to the fourth session I will tell you what are dictionaries and sets in Python. By this we will complete all the basics in Python. Those are the data types and variables. After that we will go into the second part of Python for kids wherein we will introduce the program how to think by itself or how to take some logical decisions and that is where the if and else blocks comes. And then it's very boring to write the same code again and again, right? That is a part where uh, we use loops and in that will be introduced in session number six. And then we will go to the session number seven where we will have so much fun with functions. After functions in session number eight, we will learn what are modules and how to import your own modules and also how to build your own modules. In the ninth session, we will see what are classes and what are objects in Python. And then going to the 10th session, we will see how to handle different files using Python. So how to open a text file or how to rewrite a text file and all of those things in the 10th session. And then as I told you, you will learn how to make your own games by the end of this course. So when you are making some games, you need to use some graphics, right? In the 11th and 12th sessions, we will see how to use turtle and decanter to make game graphics. These are the GUIs or graphic user interfaces. So before going into the demo, I will actually tell you who I am. My name is Vaibhav Raghavendra Devarkonda. I am an international robotic champion. I have presented many expos in IIIT Hyderabad, T-Hub Hyderabad and also IIT Sangharati Hyderabad. And I got an achievement in 2016 from Lawrence Technological University, Michigan, where I have participated in the RoboFest competition which was an international competition. And I have achieved 100% score in less than 12, 26 seconds in the RoboHit competition at IIT Hyderabad. And in the next round, which was in St. Pete Beach in US, I have scored 98% and I was placed in top 10 in the worldwide ranking in that competition. If you want to know more about all my crazy exper experiments and stuff like that, you can visit my blog that is myroboticsexperiment.blogspot.com. So, who am I actually? I am a person who have mentored many FLL teams. FLL stands for First Lego League. I have mentored many people on how to program robots using Arduino or C++ or Python. And I have also trained many trainers. I have assisted more than 5000 students and trainers and the main thing is that I love coding so my passion for coding has brought me until this stage my dream is to become a world class scientist and I am very passionate for robotics also I am a taekwondo champion and I love adventures and challenges when it, come to, when it comes to programming, you will face many challenges in between and when you have the will to face all of these, 
then only you will become an expert programmer. I am also the young co-CEO of the startup company Viba Robotics. So now let's get into our demo. Do you guys know what is communication? So right now I want you guys to ask yourself about what is communication. So communication is a type of expression, right? If you want to express yourself to someone else, then that is called communication. Okay, now I know what is communication. Then what is a communication language or more precisely what is a language a language is a medium which is used to communicate so if i want to communicate with someone else i have to talk something i have to say something with them so when i talk something i use a language like right now i am using english to talk with all of you guys this is a mode of communication and all of you guys are able to understand me by using this language isn't it now let's define what is a communication language. So it is something which is used to communicate with people and to better understand them. Right? Now the question is, is it necessary? Well, of course it is necessary, right? If you don't have any communication language, then how will you express yourself with other people? How will you communicate with them? How will they know what you want and how will you know what they want? So it is of course necessary. Right now, we have many type, different types of communication languages. Like for example, right now I am talking in English and my mother tongue is Telugu. I also know Hindi. So there are many more communication languages in the world, right? So we have Spanish, Irish, French and all of this. But what happens when like I am a guy who knows English or Telugu or Hindi. But what if a person from France who knows French comes to me and talks in French, then I won't understand anything, right? So, when you're gonna use communication language, it is important that both of them, both of the people who want to communicate, should know a particular language or should have a common language between themselves, right? Then only the communication gap between them reduces and they will understand themselves in a more better way. So, Okay, now we got to know what is communication language, but what is the relation between that and our demo? Well, let's discuss what is programming language now. So, yeah, I want you guys to ask yourselves about what is programming language also. So, till now we discussed how we humans interact with each other, right? So, in what language we talk in. And then, do you guys know what language the computers talk in or what language they understand? Well, it is the binary language, right? The language of zeros and ones. Do you guys know how to talk in binary language? Well, to be honest, I don't know. Like, I can't say hello in 0011, right? So I don't know how to talk in binary language. Then how do we communicate with computers? Like, if you want to perform a task, then how do we do it? That is the part where the programming language comes in place. So let me try to explain this with a flow diagram. So the first thing is when we have a problem statement which we want to tell the computer then we try to use human language and then it has to be converted into binary language. So this process will be fulfilled by the programming language and that will be acting as a translator or a, an interpreter in between. So it will translate our human language into the computer readable binary language and after this we'll get the output or solution, right? So this is just a simple way of understanding what is a programming language. And as we have many different types of communication languages, even there are many different types of programming languages. We have Python, we have C, we have C++, we have Java, we have Ruby, and so many, many more. But in this course, we will be learning about Python. Now, why only Python? Why not C? Why not C++? Why not Java? Well, Python is the most easiest language to learn for any type of beginner. And also, it is an open source language. And it has a huge community all over the globe. So, if you have any doubts, you can request anyone for help in Python. And also, the most important point is right in front of you. If you just look at this image in front of you, you can see the comparison between four languages, C, C++, Java and Python. And 
how to print a simple hello world program in all of these four languages. So if you take a thorough look through these four la um, pictures, then you can see in the first one, which is C, you see that it takes like about three to four lines of code to just run a simple hello world program. If you go to C++, it is taking four to five lines. And if you go to, if you go into Java, then I can see that it's, it looks a bit complicated. But if you look into Python, then it is just a single line of code, a single line of code. And how easy is that? It's just print hello world. It is very user friendly and understandable even for beginners. So that is why Python is highly recommended when you guys are starting to learn programming languages. So, okay, I learned Python, then what next? So what do you have to do after you learn Python? Well, there are various streams where you can flow after you learn Python. These streams in front of you are just some of the various streams which you can go into. So there is web development. Web development means like when you go into Google and search for a website, the back end part that is called web development. So I'll just show you an example. The best example in front of you. So the best example in front of you is Google. Did you guys know that Google's backend also uses Python? Well, in any website, there is a front end and there is a back end. The front end is the look and feel type of the website and all the processes which we do, like if I want to search something over here, I have to type something, right? So let's search for Python. And the moment I click enter, it's going to process and search for what I've, what I have entered. I entered Python and all of this will be are done in the backend. One of the most famous companies, Google, also uses Python in its backend. How great is that? And we can also use Python for des desktop applications. So what are desktop applications? When you open your laptop, we have all different types of applications over here, right? I have the Google Chrome. I have Visual Studio Code, which I'm going to introduce to you in the, in the course. And if you go over here, I also have some other things. So if you want to create these type of dips, uh, these type of applications, these are actually known as desktop applications and Python can also be used to create these type of desktop applications by using Python's GUI applications. Also, we can use Python for software development. Well, in software side, famous companies like IBM and Intel, all of these also use Python for testing and developing their own softwares. You can also use Python in educational purposes. Like if you want to do some research, Python is really recommended when you're doing data science research. Coming to data science, the next up topic is database access. So data science is the study of data, right? And right now the most important thing in this world is data. If your data is leaked, that means your privacy is leaked. So I feel that right now the most important weapon is data. So Using Python, you can access this data, manipulate this data and also analyze this data. How cool is that guys? And Python also offers you various numbers of libraries and modules for doing this. In this, the most famous ones are Pandas and NumPy. And for data visualization, we have Seaborn or Matplotlib. We can also uh, do many creative stuff with this data by using scikit-learn or TensorFlow. After that, we have network programming. So network programming involves something like IOT stuff and using Raspberry Pi with IOT, like doing some home automation, connecting to the internet and programming like that. It also involves cloud computing. After that, we have game development. And this is the part which we are going to teach you in this course. So it's going to be a very exciting journey in game development. Using Python, you can create many awesome games. After that, we have 3D graphics. So if you're watching some movie, like a 3D movie, or if you're um, going to play a game, like nowadays you have PUBG, Free Fire and all of those, right? All of these include 3D graphics. And using Python, you can also create 3D graphics. So there's an app called Blender, which uses uh, Python for creating its 3D graphics. Now, let's see who all uses Python. So, did you guys know that Facebook also uses Python in its backend and also Instagram. So, 
Most of the Instagram structure and framework was designed by using Python Django framework. And then as I told you, even Google uses Python in its backend. As YouTube is also a daughter of Google, even YouTube uses Python. And I guess many of you have heard of this website called Quora. This is like a very useful website for students uh, wherein it has many answers for your questions. And even Quora uses Python to store its huge database of answers and questions. I guess you all might have enjoyed the movie Star Wars, right? Did you know that in Star Wars, all the graphics and uh, the CGI computer generated imagery was done by using Python. So what is CGI? CGI means like uh, in, in the movie Star Wars, the aliens or the people over there were actually not real people, right? So those pictures were actually generated by using Python. And then Spotify. Spotify is also a new trending music app, right? And even Spotify uses Python in its backend. Even Netflix, which is a huge streaming network, uses Python in its backend to store its database of all the movies. And what do you know guys? Even the most famous space research center, NASA, also uses Python while they're doing their research. Wow, this is awesome. Some of the famous companies like IBM and Intel uses Python uh, to test their softwares and develop their software, softwares. And even Raspberry Pi, which is like a microcomputer, works on Python. So you can program this Raspberry Pi and this is like a mini computer just under 3 to 4 thousand rupees. This, was, this is also a great application to use and you can do many wonders with, by using Raspberry Pi. So let's cut this chit chat and go on live hands on. So let's do the first program in Python that is a simple smiley program. Now since you all guys are here to listen to my session, I'm very happy and overwhelmed. So I want to give you guys a smiley. So let me give it to you guys by using Python. The first step over here is to open my Python IDLE. So I'm gonna press on Windows and search for IDLE. The first thing over here which I get is Python IDLE. I'm gonna open this. And over here you can see the Python shell. So this window is called the Python shell. And whenever you open the IDLE, this is the first window which is gonna open. Uh, but generally when we're doing any type of programming by using Python, we don't use a shell, but we have to create a new file. So creating a new file. Let's see how to create a new file. To create a new file, you can find the file option over here in the menu. Click on file and you can create, you can click on new file or the shortcut key is control plus N. So let us just create a new file over here. When you are talking about computers, inputs and outputs are must, right? So when we are doing programming, we have to give some outputs to the user, isn't it? Let's start our demo with that. I want to give some output to the user as a smiley because all of you guys are here to listen to my session, right? So I want to print out a smiley. So the function which I'm going to use over here is print. And then I have to use triple quotes and again triple quotes. And uh, for my smiley, I'm going to use uh, O as the eyes. So one more eye over here. And then let's make a nose over here. So I'm going to use the pipe symbol as the nose. And then here comes the mouth. So let's use a slash and then underscores. And then finally one more slash. Wow, this looks like a cute, cute little smiley. Okay, so this was our program. After we complete writing our program, we have to save our file. So to save our file, just go to file. And then you can click save. I'm gonna save it as demo one, and then click on save over here. So now your Python file is saved. Awesome. And this is ready to run. So if you want to run or execute your Python program, you can see the run option over here, right? Click on it and click on run module. 
or you can use the shortcut key that is F5. So whenever we run the program, you can see the output in your shell. So as you can see, I got a smiley face over here, right? And this is a cute little smiley. Wow. Awesome guys, our first project in Python is completed. Mission accomplished. So let's go and see what is the second task we have up ahead. So a Python program for introducing yourself. So okay, let's ask the user who he is when he enters when he when he executes the program. And also let's greet him saying hello and then his name and let's ask him how are you. Okay, so let me open my file again. And over here, if you want to ask a person anything, it is an input, right? So I'm taking some input from him. So in the same manner, we have to use input over here. Uh, to use an input value again somewhere, we have to use a variable. So I'll just uh, define a name, variable called name. And over here, let's say input. And then enter your name. Just make sure you leave a space at the end so that it will uh, make the output look a bit uh, neat. Okay, and then as I told you, I want to greet him, right? So again, it, it is output, so I have to use the print function. So let's use print welcome and then I want to print his name over here so I'm going to use percentage s and some exclamation marks and then let's ask how he is so how are you after that I'm going to use a percentage and then name okay our program is ready don't worry guys if you don't understand anything which I'm going to say right now because this is just a demo session you will learn everything detailed when you enroll into the course. So let us just save our program. You can save it by saying control plus S. So control S and let's run the program. So I'm going to press F5 on my keyboard to run it. Okay, so it's asking asking me to enter my name. My name is Vibov. Awesome. It's saying welcome Vibov. How are you? And it's also giving me a great smiley face. Wow. It looks so cute. Awesome, our second mission is also accomplished. So the next task over here is to play a music in Python. Well, whenever you play any games, you recognize the music first, right? Music uh, makes it feel interesting, right? So that's why music is a very important element in game designing. So let's see how to add some music in our program. So to add music in our program, I'm going to use something called as WinSound. So the first step over here is to import WinSound to our program. So import WinSound. And then, now I want to uh, create a beep sound whenever the program is going to start running or executing. And then it has to ask all of these and print the smiley. After that, it's gonna make a beep sound again at the end. So one beep sound in the starting of the program and one beep sound in the ending of the program. So let's say win sound dot beep. And then inside this we have to give the frequency of the beep and also the duration of the beep. So the frequency is 2000 and the duration is, let's say I want uh, to execute the beep sound for two seconds. So two seconds is, uh, over here it's 2000 like I guess the units here are in milliseconds or microseconds so that's why we're gonna use 2000 over here and then at the end we'll we want another sound at the end right so I'm gonna say win sound dot beep in the ending of the program and again the frequency has to be 2000 and now let's make it a little short so I, I want to keep it as 1000 that is one second so in the starting of the program it's gonna give us a beep sound for two seconds and also at the ending of the program it's gonna run a beep sound for one second so let's save it again by pressing ctrl s on your keyboard and also run it by using f5 awesome that was the first beep sound in the starting of the program 
Now let's try. Uh, I'm gonna type my name over here. That is Viber. And then enter. Awesome. Could you hear that? We also got a beep sound at the end of the program. Bravo! Our third class. Our third task is also accomplished. Okay, now let's enter into some graphics. As I told you, in this course, you are gonna design some games. If you want to learn the basics in graphics, then we'll start by drawing some lines. And that is what I'm gonna show you in today's demo. So I am gonna use the TK Enter module to draw a line. So let's go hands on. So let me show you it in our Python IDE. I'm gonna just clear all of this by selecting and delete. And now let's say from tkinter import star this will import everything which is there inside the module tkinter and now we have to create a window where we, where we have to draw our line right so to create a window let me name the window as win and then tk so by using tk we can create a window and then like normally when we uh, draw stuff or paint stuff we use a canvas right so we have something called canvas in our tkinter also to draw lines or shapes or if you want to insert some images we have to use this canvas or, um, we have to use this canvas so let's create our canvas over here i'm going to name it as canvas is equal to canvas and then first thing over here is we have to uh, tell in which window we want the canvas so i want to place the canvas inside the window which i have created over here and then the width of the canvas should be 500 and then the height of the canvas should be again 500 and then let's change the background color so I want the background color of the canvas to be uh, red okay and then we have to place this canvas inside our window right so let's pack it I'm gonna say canvas dot pack and this will place it inside our uh, inside our window after this i wanted to create a line so let's say i want to create a line from the starting of the window to the ending of the window so it's going to be a diagonal in the middle of the window to create a line we have to use canvas dot create line over here we have to mention the initial position and the final position so as i told you from the starting point starting point means 0 comma 0 so 0 comma 0 and then the ending point now since our height and width is 500 and 500 the ending point must be 500 comma 500 so let's I'm gonna use 500 comma 500 over here and then let's just make our line a bit thicker so that you guys can see it so I'm gonna say width is equal to 5 and finally I'm gonna place a main loop. So awesome guys, our program is completed. And let's just save it and let's run this file. As you can see, I got the desired output, right? And let's try to compare it with our program. Over here, we have created our own window and we have placed our canvas over here, which is with the red colored background right so our canvas with the red colored background and it has width of 500 units and height is also 500 units and then we wanted to create a line which is from the starting point to the ending point which is like a diagonal right so the point over here is 0 comma 0 and the ending point located over here is 500 comma 500 fantastic guys so using tkinter in python is as simple as this now let's go to the next task. That is the turtle module. So let's play a little with the turtle. Our task over here is to create a square by using a turtle. So again, let me clear everything from here by selecting and deleting. So the first step over here is to import the turtle module. So from turtle import star and again we need to create our window right. 
So let's create our screen over here. I'm gonna say S is my screen name. Screen. Now let's create our turtle. The turtle name over here should be T and T is equal to turtle. Let's make the turtle uh, move a bit slow. So I'm gonna say T dot speed and then inside the brackets let's insert one. After that let's also make the turtle size a bit bigger. So I'm gonna say T dot pen size and let's insert phi inside the brackets over here. So our task over here is to create a square, right? We know that a square has four equal sides and each side is um, and each adjacent side has a 90 degree angle. So using this information, let's try to create a square. So I am going to use a for loop over here for i in range 4 because it has four sides. For i in range 4, let's make the turtle move forward. So t dot fd or you can use forward for 100 units and then it has to turn for the right, right angle. So t dot right and right angle means 90 degrees, right? So t dot right and then inside that uh, inside the brackets let's insert 90. After that uh, to make it visible we have to pass the main loop. So I'm going to save the file and then finally run the file. So as you can see this is creating a square for us and each of the side is 100 units and also the adjacent sides have 90 degree angles, right? So creating a square or creating shapes with turtle is as easy as this. And guess what guys, we can make awesome games by using this simple graphics in Python. And you guys can create wonders by using Python graphics. So now I'll show you all the different types of games which you guys will create in this course. Do you guys want to create your own games? Come on, I will show you what you guys will learn in this course. So in this course, the games which I will be teaching you is first the basic guess game. So as you can see over here, the rules are very clear. You have 10 chances and to guess the number in, I have in my mind. That means the computer is going to have a random number in its mind and I the user have to guess the number. And it's gonna it's saying that the number is between 1 to 100 and it's also saying me that it's gonna give some hints in between okay that looks cool so let's try to guess the number uh, let's try with a random number let's say 64 okay it's saying oh this number is wrong so it's saying that the number in my mind is greater so it has to be greater than 64 and it's also indicating that I have nine chances left okay so a number greater than 64 Let's try 75. It's saying that it's even more greater than 75. Okay, then let's try uh, 90. Oh, it's even more greater than 90. Uh, then let's try 95. Okay, so it's saying it's smaller than 95. That means it has to be somewhere between 90 and 95. Okay, then let's try 92. Smaller than 92. Okay then, I guess it's obvious now, it has to be 91. Hooray, I found the number in just 6 chances, awesome. And at the end it's gonna ask me if I want to play again or not. Okay, let's try again. So I'm gonna say yes, that is why. And okay, but now I have a doubt, is the name, is the number gonna be same every time? Okay, then let me try the same number, 91. As you can see, it isn't the same number, right? So it's gonna change the number every time. I played again and so it's saying the number is smaller so let's try 50 okay so it is somewhere between 50 and 91 okay then let's try this 75 smaller than 75 so somewhere between 50 and 75 so let's try 65 greater than 65 so has to be between 65 and 75 okay then let's try 70 greater than 70 so somewhere between 70 and 75 let's try 73 oh smaller than 73 then I guess it has to be 72 what oh, it's more smaller 
then it has to be 71 awesome i found it in just eight chances awesome guys so this was the first game which you guys will learn in python for kids and okay now i'll show you the other games so right now i'll just say no and let's go to the second game that is the ball game in this game you will see a ball and a bat and we have to make sure the ball doesn't hit the floor and as soon as the ball taps on the bat the score increases by plus 10 so i guess you might have seen this game on the old phones and i'm actually controlling the bat with my arrow keys on the keyboard so we can make all of this by using python tk enter yeah yes guys this game was made by using python tk enter and as you can see as soon as the ball reaches the ground it's gonna say game over so this was the second game in python for kids coming to the third game over here which is the snake game this is the classic snake game which you might have played on the old nokia phones or right now it is available in the play store also i guess so yeah again i can control the snake which is this black square with my keyboard and i have to uh, eat the fruit right and as soon as i eat the fruit it's gonna add a tail to me so as you can see whenever i eat the tail it's gonna add an extra tail for me oh i just missed it and then it's gonna increase the score whenever i eat the tail uh, the fruit it's also gonna score the high score over here so let's say i'm gonna dash the uh, edge so whenever i dash dash the edge of the uh, playground that means the game is over and as you can see it's gonna store the high score over there and it's gonna reset the normal score and let's try to play again oh that was very fast okay so yeah guys this was made by using python turtle so the before game was made using python tkinter and this was made by using python turtle making games using python is very easy it's like a piece of cake so are you guys ready to join this adventure with me well i am ready to teach you guys about python tkinter and turtle and to encourage you guys to make your own games so what do you guys say are you ready well if you are ready then why wait guys register now for the awesome adventure with python if you want more details, you can contact us at 961-871-5457 or you can use the landline number 040-4026-7455. This is brought to you by Vibawa Robotics. Happy coding guys. Bye bye.